Hello, everybody. So I'm working on some trees, trying to make them a little more performant. And trees are one of the most performant, heavy assets you could add to your game. So if you have a choice, you may wish to avoid uh, large forests. But they do look pretty, and they do look nice. They add a lot. So I do a lot of alterations. One for the style, as you can see, very colorful and vibrant. I lean more towards realistic uh, looking geometry, but with a stylized uh, texture. So the first thing I do is look for the types of trees I want. And the easiest was some of the Mega Scans trees, uh, which are right here, the European Hornbeam. I have a couple of different asset packs. I have the pot, these pine trees. Uh, and some oak trees from a different asset pack. And the goal is to make them all perform relatively similarly, and it requires a lot of work to do that. Here's how I go about it, and there may be some better ways to do things, but some of the topics I'll cover are the world position offset, nanite, nanite overdraw, the textures and materials, and the collision. Looking at the hornbeam tree, I have uh, over here a comparison of the original from Megascans and after I've done some alterations to it. If we go into the asset itself, it's a large tree, one and a half million triangles. And uh, after doing some edits, I have this is the result I have currently. And you can see I took the one and a half million triangle mesh and it's down to 600,000. And at this LOD range, I'm at 15,000 triangles. And it looks relatively similar. Um, so 15,000 triangles versus 650,000 triangles. Using Nanite, there's not going to be much difference in performance. But for the non-Nanite situations, that should be a lot bigger difference. So what did I do to reduce the triangle count? It was very simple, in fact. All of the tiny little branches that connect to every single leaf. You could see every branch is tons of geometry. And I just thought that was overkill. It made a giant mesh. It's going to make the mesh larger for the disc. Bloating your game size, uh, even if it doesn't hurt performance due to nanite. Just imported the asset that came out at Unreal, 1.4 million triangles. And uh, what I can do is first go to the materials here and let's select the leaves. I'll just hit H to hide those. Sharp edges also could add extra geometry and edges and, and things to your asset. So if it's not that important, I turn them off. I mean, you're not going to see that level of detail. And you can see we're left with this uh, mess of branches. Uh, another thing, we can try to convert it all to quads, which makes things a little easier in Blender. And then from here, um, the decorations, we could uh, delete them entirely and not even have them. It's something that's not going to be easily seen. And uh, then what I did is I just go on the larger branches and hit L to select all the connected geometry, which gives me all the branches I want to keep. This takes a little bit of time to do this, but I went through the four trees, the four assets you saw in my asset zoo and selected a bunch of these smaller shoots, depending how much detail you want in your game. And then I could just hit H to hide all that. If I felt I didn't need all this, can hit A to select all, hit D to delete it all, delete all faces, mesh, show, hide, reveal, hidden. This is what we're left with. And now it's a 540,000 faces, 500,000 vertices. It's uh, reduced quite significantly. And there's more of these sharp edges. We'll clear those. Then I just select it all, file, export. And then I won't overwrite the me the mega scan tree. I'll just bring it in as my own tree in case there's any issues with the import. So I have both versions in my editor and I can uh, see how they look next to each other and make sure things aren't too different from each other. Um, reducing materials is 
it does help with draw calls, but on, but if you're using Nanite, everything is one draw call anyway. But uh, I feel less materials still helps in various ways. So to remove a material, I can uh, come over here, hit the negative sign, get rid of a material. So another thing I try to do is keep all of my assets and, you know, I have like three different types of asset packs here, you know, mega scans, some pine trees, some oak trees. These are not mega scans. They all come with their own materials, their own master materials. Um, so what I prefer to do is uh, have a master foliage material. Ideally, you might want to take like the mega scan master material and use that for all of the assets. So I would go in, create material instances for for um, these other assets, and then set up the textures in the uh, those material instances so it all still works properly. The only difference is the wind systems might be a little different on these uh, other trees, so that's something um, might need to customize the material to handle how the tree was built. And that's another performance hit as well. When placing the trees in the world, there's a world position offset disable distance. So for this pine tree, if you in the search box type world, maybe at like 5,000 units, the, it'll be disabled. And you can see now the wind is not being affected. And it's um, going to take a little experimenting to see which settings work the best. But um, what, what it does is uh, world position offset is a huge performance issue, especially with Nanite. So you'll only want to enable it within a certain range, whatever looks best and whatever is best uh, for performance. And then another setting you will want is if we were to look at the virtual shadow map, the cached pages, you could see blue, it's being invalidated, which is not good. This leads to severe performance degradation. If you were to search cache, you get to this. Um, it's in an advanced tab in lighting. You're, you're going to want to go with rigid or static. If you have a game where players can cut down your trees, then you may want to keep it rigid. If I turn this on for the other tree here rigid you can see green is good um, in my asset zoo here everything just defaults to everything's been hand placed and I haven't messed with these settings so I don't really care that it's blue here but in my actual levels I make sure the whole levels green now for collisions and collisions are so important Collisions are CPU heavy. They will tear down your game's performance very easily, and it's something that's easily um, overlooked because you can't really see them. Uh, so the simplest collision I have is these pine trees. So I simply went in and deleted out whatever collision came with this asset, and I added I added two different boxes because of the bend at the top. Now in my game, it requires flying around as a bird character so i need collision all the way up the tree and i want the branches to have i don't want them to affect the character you could just fly right through the uh the leaves the branches it'll make for a smoother gameplay experience and if we go to the collision tabs uh we can see the two box collisions and um, blocks everything and project default is the same as uh, simple as complex. So you do not want to use complex. So I would avoid the second and fourth option as much as possible. Now there's other options with collision and it gets a little more complicated with these other trees. Here's the player collisions right now and I've started with these smaller trees and this bush has no collision at all. And then these small trees have a single capsule that just goes straight down the center. Then with this tree here, you can see I isolated a couple of the larger branches. And if I was to add such detailed collision, it would just start affecting performance. So there's a little bit of what do I want the player to collide with and what do I want them to fly through? And in a game with some lush forests, I want it to be a rather smooth experience. I don't want uh, every single branch catching the character and making them stop flying. So uh, this is 
what I felt was a good amount of collision for my trees. I haven't gotten to these back trees yet and they look something like this. Now I may want to add a little more collision on these larger branches just so the player as a bird character can like land here because right now it's impossible. They'll just fall right through. Here's how I've been editing the collision and I do it in Blender. In the content browser, I go to the asset, right click, actions, export. You get a pop-up box. I kind of just leave everything the way it is and hit export. So I have an oak tree uh, file that I just do it all in. So I'll bring in one of these tall oak trees. We'll just get rid of this duplicate one. So the tall oak tree import here's what we got and the first thing i do is get rid of the current collision as a reference let me just look at that real quick it's uh, 162 triangles so then the next thing i do is i do not need all these lod's so i'll get rid of the third the second and zero because zero when it's a nanite tree unreal exports it very strangely it's not it doesn't look good um, in an F fbx file but in unreal i guess it's fine i use lod1 and it's everything's a little more where it should be i'm going to take lod1 shift d to duplicate it and now i have a duplicated tree I just keep the, this one as my base. So here's what I'm going to edit. And uh, the first thing I do is in edit mode, go to the materials under this leaf material, hit select everything with the leaf material, delete all that. What I want to do is figure out which branches I want to collide with. So I hit L and that might be it. I don't think I want to collide with anything else other than this main trunk. So I'll hit P and separate that and we'll hide everything else. I'll rename this, just make things a little simpler. I'm gonna name it white tall 01, and I'll copy that. I'm going to make this the same, but I'll put UCX in front. It's an identifier that says this is gonna be a collision mesh, and I could put 01 at the end. So you can see SM white oak tall 01 matches this uh, name of the main mesh here. I'm making a collision mesh with the same name just with UCX in the front and another O1 at the end. So now we're going to add some modifiers. First in object mode, select the mesh we're using for our collision, add modifier, decimate it down. You can do planar here because it doesn't matter and I, I get pretty aggressive, maybe like 35 degrees or something. And then we do a geometry node. Now here I'll hit new and under geometry nodes, get rid of that. We're going to do convex hull, geometry to convex hull, back to geometry. This makes a convex hull, and then we can do another decimate, and then I can do another geometry node. And I can, uh, instead of doing another new convex hull and redoing that, I can hit this little button here and select what I just did. And you can see I already had one made, which I was using before, but um, this little button, I could just use the uh, geometry node that I had already just set up. At this stage, we're going to um, edit this down a little bit. First, I'm gonna turn these modifiers off, edit, uh, see through x-ray mode here, make sure everything's in faces, hit C, and I want this branch here to be First of all, this little thing, I don't want geometry for that, so I'll delete it. And this little top part, I want to delete that. Do I want collision this high up in the tree? Probably not. So I will delete these branches as well. This branch here can all be one collision capsule thing. So I will highlight some of the faces. If you hold shift, it'll unselect them. Once I've selected where I want a collision thing to go, I hit P and um, separate it. Now, if I go back to object mode, turn off x-ray mode, and come to this new selection just to show how it looks, you can see that will be a collision box right there. And it looks like it's 24 triangles. So we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of this here. 
Uh, again, x-ray mode. Now, if there's giant bends, the collision is going to be this giant convex box because of this bend in the branch. So either I need this to be its own collision box or I delete it and just not have collision up there at all. So in my case, I'm aggressively trying to keep it as performant as possible because I do not need collision that high in the tree. I'd rather the player be able to just fly right through it. Um, so, But I'll make this a branch they can collide with. And then this trunk looks fairly spherical. I think that can remain as a single collision box. So now in object mode, let's check out this one here. I think that's a decent shape. And then this one here, that's a decent shape. And if I select them all, we're at 76 triangles, which is like 90 triangles less than before. And that's going to be the collision for this tree. I just need to rename a couple of these. Select, hit F2, Control C to copy the name, paste it down here by hit F2, hit Control V, increment them up like this. Then I select the main tree and these collision boxes and file export FBX. So um, the one without the letters is the custom mesh I just exported. I'm just going to do import and I make sure not to import textures. I do not create materials. I don't want to set up any of that stuff. I'm just, I just want the mesh. Okay, so all I want from this is the collision. If I go into it and uh, go to collision, you can see there's three elements. That's the three boxes we just made. You can see simple collision. There it is. All I need to do is right click and hit copy on this convex elements and it'll copy all of these. And then I just need to go into the tall tree I already have set up. So you can see there was eight elements previously. I'm just gonna paste you, there's no delete here. You can you see there's no option to delete, but if I hit paste, it overwrites the eight with the three that I just uh, copied from the other tray. So now I've um, these are the new convex hull elements and uh, the collision previously on this tree in particular, it went up here, up this branch, which maybe you want that. You can easily add it. So that's um, 90 less triangles than before, and it's uh, following the tree as well as possible. So that's how I've been doing my uh, collisions on these, you know, wild trees that have branches everywhere. It's a bit of a give and take. How much collision do I need? I feel this is a better way of doing it than trying to do it in the engine with adding boxes and spheres and capsules and using this tool here. I feel the workflow in Blender is a little easier and quicker. The last performant thing with trees and foliage in general would be Nanite Overdraw and how to eliminate it. Now, this is a big topic and takes the most amount of time, and I'm not going to be able to do a very thorough example here. And it's something I haven't gotten to yet with the trees, but the gist of it is the cards for the leaves are, they have a lot of overdraw. So if we go to my asset zoo here and just look at the uh, nanite overdraw, you can see a lot of yellow. That's clearly not good. The pine trees aren't too bad, and the hornbeam trees, there's some hot spots in them. Overall, not too bad. So this happens with all foliage. Every foliage asset needs to be treated with care and really needs attention because I haven't found a single asset from any store or place, mega scans included, that tries to eliminate the overdraw. Everything's just using cards and nobody is optimizing for nanite. You don't want cards. You want physical geometry. And I've come upon a tactic to handle this. And I did this with some wheat recently. So I have this crop generator. I basically have some variation in scale that follows like a noise texture. My density is actually like a spacing. So higher is less dense. It looks a little weird with the grass underneath of it. I got to paint out the grass. So now there's no grass underneath. Now if we look at the overdraw on this, 
it's not too bad at all. That's looking pretty good for a bunch of wheat. Let's experiment with it maybe and make it a little more dense. Let's try 125 spacing. So now we're getting some hot spots in a couple areas where it's uh, there's some hills and things. From the sky, it's not too bad. Down here, the overdraw is going to be a lot worse. Let's check that out. This is how the, the overdraw looks right now. Now, this is the original with cards. If I was to throw this one in here and hit generate, that's where we started. Big difference. That's how it looks now. And this is how it looked import fbx and i brought in the the wheat so you can see this is the the cards of the wheat now this is very important because the material is set up to have wind and i didn't want to change the normals however this is set up for the wind so i kept these cards i did want to add a ma the material to them so i could see where the wheat is so i go to material and i go to this base color hit this dot I want to bring in a image texture. And before I went, did this, uh, I exported the texture for the wheat. So I basically went to the wheat asset. This is the texture. And I, in the content browser, I right clicked it and exported it. So then I'm able to come in here and open the image, the diffuse texture. And then it doesn't show up because you have to hit Z material preview. So that's how it looks in Blender now. In edit mode, I hit K for the knife tool and I simply followed the foliage up like this. So I'll just try to make this quick here. Now here, there's a edge here. I'll just cut that off there, hit the knife tool again and start here. And I'll just try to be rough with this. It depends how much detail you want, how in the lines you get, but because this is nanite, you don't have to worry too much about the number of triangles. So you can really get into these uh, crevices and follow it a little more closely. Again, this is gonna be just for nanite foliage only. You would not want to do this for um, systems that can't use nanite, but that's why there's the uh, fallback meshes and stuff. So I uh, highlighted that wheat. Then I can just select faces, do something like this and select all the outline, all the boxes here, delete faces, and I'm left with a strand of wheat. And then instead of doing that a million times for all of this, I would just hit shift D and drag it in place to the next one that's similar to it. Do something like that. And then I would uh, delete that whole card and keep working my way around until all these cards were replaced by these. The last step is to triangulate all this, get, get some geometry in here because right now it's not quads or anything. So I would just triangulate faces that turns everything into triangles. If I open my final one, this is how it turned out. You can see I got pretty detailed. I was in there outlining pretty closely. Quite a bit of triangles in there. For nanite, it doesn't matter that much. So I basically um, did one strand of wheat there, and then there's this cluster that took a lot of time. And then I just duplicated that cluster a few different times. Let's see, if I turn on the statistics, we have uh, 7,000 vertices, which is quite a bit. You know, that's a lot more than the cards. But again, this is for nanite. What I did is, you know, you turn on nanite, I turn on preserve area. You probably want this with most foliage other than like small stuff, but for fields, I wanted it to be visible from a farther distance. So I turned it on just in case it makes any difference, but it mostly is helpful for trees. Hit apply, and then I wanna replace the nanite mesh. So I'm going to import. This is the 7,000 triangle one. So you can see uh, my nanite mesh is 7,000 triangles, but the fallback is still the cards. If I do nanite fallback, this is the um, cards view. So there's only one LOD, but it's either gonna be nanite or not nanite. Um, and I didn't change the material at all. It's the same exact material and it has the wind built in. All I did was just cut around the um, geometry 
which eliminates a lot of overdraw because all of that wasted, masked out space is um, no longer geometry that's no longer overlapping with itself. So that, as you can see, really helps with the overdraw. This is the final result, and uh, this was the original version. We're using just cards. We'll take a lot of time, but this is definitely going to kill performance if I was to leave it like this. Hopefully this some of these tips will help you in your journey to making a similar style game. Uh, stay tuned, and I'm going to start going into a lot more about my game and some of the gameplay decisions I've been making. Hopefully I'll see you there.